Are you suspecting my husband of cheating? Don't worry about that. My husband is not the type to cheat. You've always been too trusting. I'm worried you might get deceived. Even when her friend said this, the wife didn't believe her husband was cheating. However, something unthinkable was about to happen to the wife. What exactly awaits her? Let's hear the wife's story. Please listen until the end. I am Finley, a full-time housewife. My husband, Carson, is an office worker. I met him when I was 25 years old. At that time, he was my boss and I was his subordinate. We got married because I became pregnant. Since we were busy preparing for the childbirth, and then we were busy taking care of the baby after she was born, we didn't have a wedding ceremony. I lost my parents early on. Therefore, I think of my parents-in-law as my own parents. My in-laws are kind to me, too. When my husband and I were about to start building a happy family with our daughter Alora, my married life began to go down after only a few months. I have a younger sister. Her name is Delaney and she is five years younger than me. At that time, Delaney was 20 years old. We, sisters, grew up without parents. My sister is my only blood relative. We've always been close, and we got along well even after we became adults. She and I talked to each other about our problems and we dressed up and went out on our days off. I introduced my husband to her right away. That was my mistake. My sister is married, too. Of course, I knew her husband, Juan, well, and our families had a close relationship. Her family and we went out for meals, and we even took short trips together. My daughter was still a baby, so we couldn't travel far, but I hoped that one day, we could go on a trip somewhere far away with my sister's family. We shared stories about married life, had our little spats, and talked about our worries. My sister and I were that close. In the midst of all this, my sister announced that she was expecting her first child. My husband and I were thrilled for her. Then, our children will be close in age, right? I was looking forward to my sister's delivery day with that thought in mind. Watching my sister and her husband looking so happy up close, a thought crossed my mind. There was something I haven't been able to do and I still wanted to do. That was having a wedding ceremony. My husband and I got married because I became pregnant. When we got married, my belly was already big, so we didn't have a wedding ceremony. I want to have a proper wedding ceremony with my husband, I thought. So, I decided to talk to my husband about it when he returned from work. We had been married for a few months without having a ceremony. I don't care if it's with only our close friends. I just want to have a wedding ceremony. In response, my husband said, well, maybe. He didn't seem too keen on it. He responded as if he didn't care. To men, a wedding was probably not a big deal. Men and women just saw it differently. That's how I felt about my husband's attitude at that moment. But he did agree to have a ceremony at least. We decided to have a small wedding ceremony. The next day, I met up with a friend from high school. Of course, it was to share the news of our upcoming wedding. I had my child with me. My friend and I were talking in a nearby family restaurant, drinking some tea. You guys are newlyweds, so you must be all lovey-dovey every day, huh? My husband seems to be busy with work recently. He comes home late almost every night and works on weekends too. When I said, Ophelia's expression clouded. Oh, really? Have your husband's hobbies or fashion changed lately? Fashion? Well, maybe he's become more stylish lately. Is that all? That's all. He's a great dad to my daughter and he is always nice to her and me. Hmm. She interlocked her fingers and started pondering. Do you suspect my husband of cheating? No way, he's not the type to cheat. Don't worry. You've always been too trusting. I'm worried you might get deceived. My husband is 100% innocent. 
Don't worry. Well, if you say so. At that moment, I received an email on my phone. It was from an unknown email address. I'm so happy to spend the night with you. I love you. What is this? I assumed it was spam at the time. However, that email was not spam at all. I showed the email to Ophelia. Her expression turned even more troubled. Her attitude didn't make sense to me at the time. But I never imagined that something like this would happen to me. That day, after I finished sharing the news of the wedding with Ophelia, I headed home with my daughter. Finally, it was our wedding day. We had meticulously prepared for the wedding. Naturally, I was the bride. As it takes quite some time for women to prepare, I went to the wedding venue with my child a little earlier. However, even when I finished everything, from putting the wedding gown on to getting the hair and makeup done, my husband still didn't show up. The staff at the venue was supposed to look after my daughter during the ceremony. Speaking of my husband, last night he was out drinking with friends as pre-wedding celebration. So today, my husband had said he would come directly to the venue. But he still hasn't shown up yet. No matter how many times I called, there was no answer. Of course, I was in my wedding gown and all ready. With less than 30 minutes until the ceremony starts. Is your husband still not here? Our wedding was small scale. But there were, of course, people from my husband's workplace among guests. And my friends also seemed to find it strange. Eventually, even a venue staff asked, is the groom not here yet? I had opposed the celebration party last night. But my husband had said, don't worry. I'll definitely make it to the wedding. This is ridiculous. I couldn't understand my husband's actions. The venue staff said, I'm sorry, but we can't wait any longer. I was alone, panicking, and wondering, what should I do? Tears welled up in my eyes. Then, Ophelia rushed over to me. It can't be helped. Let's at least thank everyone who came. I'll help too. I said, thank you, Ophelia. And wiped away my tears. It's our fault that my husband hasn't shown up. I had to at least thank the guests who had come. With the help of the venue staff, my in-laws and I told the guests from the stage that the groom couldn't make it due to health reasons and that we would like them to just enjoy the meal. Naturally, it caused quite a commotion. I apologized to the guests who had come, along with my in-laws. My friend also helped me. Everyone took the time to come here for us yet. I feel terrible. My heart felt crushed with such feelings. My friend stood by my side and comforted me. The situation was so dire that even now I can hardly remember what happened then. Despite the embarrassment, the wedding without the groom somehow came to an end. In the end, my husband never showed up and did not contact me until the end. I apologized to each and every person who came to our wedding ceremony at the exit in my wedding gown and saw them off. When everything was over, I was completely exhausted. Why didn't my husband come? Why didn't he even contact me? Thinking about it made my stomach turn. As soon as I picked up my daughter, who had been looked after at the venue, she started to fuss. I gave her some milk and put her to sleep in a crib at the venue. I found myself still in my wedding gown. I started to cry right there. That's when, my sister's husband, Juan, appeared in the childcare room of the venue where I was. My friend was there too. It suddenly hit me. Come to think of it, my sister and her husband weren't in the wedding hall. I was so worried about my husband who never showed up and I was also preoccupied with taking care of the guests who had come to the ceremony. So I didn't notice that they were not at the ceremony at all. Juan? Actually. He told me something unbelievable with a pale face. That's how the nightmare-like wedding came to an end. A year has passed since that day, and my daughter has grown up a lot. She and I left the house where we used to live with my husband, and moved to my in-law's house. One day, 
I received a call from an unfamiliar phone number. Of course, I ignored it. But this person kept calling me so persistently that I finally answered. Oh! It's me, Carson! The caller turned out to be my husband, the one who had skipped our wedding. I was so surprised that I couldn't even speak. My husband started talking without any regard. You're still single, aren't you? What a pathetic life. Living alone must be lonely. What kind of life are you living? I could come back to you if you want. My husband said in a mocking way. I said, really? That's great. I've been wanting to see you. Then, I told my husband that I was living with my daughter at his parents' house. Within half an hour, my husband came to my in-law's house. The intercom at my in-law's house rang loudly. When I opened the door, my husband was standing there. I was utterly shocked that he had come all the way to my in-law's house. Wow! I can't believe you actually came! I looked closely at my husband and I noticed something about him. When we first met, he was a fresh and clean-cut guy. Even in casual clothes, he had an air of cleanliness about him. However, my husband, whom I hadn't seen for a year, was wearing a tattered t-shirt. Moreover, he was wearing pants that looked like they had not been washed for I don't know how long. Furthermore, his body is emaciated and his stubble has grown unchecked. He looked like a slovenly man. Of course, his hair was messy, too. Disgusting. That was my first impression when I saw my husband. As I stood there in shock, my husband started talking again as he pleases at the doorstep. We'll live together again. Wouldn't that be better for you? It would help you financially, too, wouldn't it? Even my old parents would be happier if I came back. What are you talking about? I chuckled. Actually, after that nightmarish wedding was over, my sister's husband, Juan, who had rushed in, told me a shocking revelation. I received a letter. Carson and Delaney ran away together. Juan exclaimed. My friend who had brought Juan here whispered, I knew it. According to Juan, on the day before our wedding, my sister went out, saying she was going to hang out with friends and never returned. Of course, Juan tried to find her but couldn't. Juan was in despair. Then, when he checked the mailbox, he found a letter. I've fallen in love with my brother-in-law. I can't stay here anymore. Carson and I are destined to be together. Goodbye. He said he was shocked, but at the same time remembered today's ceremony and came all the way here. I, too, was shocked and couldn't say anything. I had actually had my suspicions. But perhaps I had pretended not to notice because I didn't want to ruin our happy life. Whenever my sister and her husband hung out with us, my husband was constantly gazing at my sister. After all, my sister was what you'd call a beauty, with a slender figure. Her smooth black hair was beautiful even from my point of view of the same sex. My husband seemed unable to take his eyes off her, always stealing glances and sporting a lovesick expression. In contrast, I had an ordinary face, and a chubby figure. I thought that any man would choose my sister, even from my point of view as a woman. However, I never imagined that something was going on between my husband and my sister. I had a bad feeling and decided to check our shared bank account history on my phone. To my shock, the account balance was at zero. In that moment, I collapsed to the floor. My friend placed her hand on my shoulder and said, if only I had advised you sooner. She had been working at a detective agency. When she heard my story, she suspected that my husband might be cheating. I told my husband the whole story. When my husband heard it, he angrily retorted, Are you suspecting that Delaney and I are having an affair? You face is ugly, but I guess your heart is ugly too. Do you have any evidence? Do you? Excuse me, my friend, Ophelia, came out of one of the rooms in the house. I had called her when my husband contacted me. She handed my husband her business card. A detective agency? My husband exclaimed in surprise. 
This is the result of your behavior investigation. The document given to my husband stated that he had spent the night with my sister on the day before the wedding. His friend, who was supposed to have been drinking with him, had actually moved to a distant place for work. And the documents were filled with the results of the investigations up to this day. My friend had been secretly investigating my husband's affair since the moment she saw the email I received that read, I'm so happy to spend the night with you. I love you. I later learned this, but my husband meant to send the email to my sister but he sent it to me by mistake. I told my husband who was trembling after he saw the investigation report. I'm going to demand $30,000 for the wedding that was ruined, plus $20,000 for the money you spent from our savings from you. In addition, I'm going to claim alimony and child support. Of course, I will also demand compensation from my sister. Aren't we still a married couple? Please, don't do this. My husband was sobbing and begging for forgiveness. I later learned that he didn't even know that he would have to pay alimony if he was unfaithful to his wife. A claim for compensation for infidelity is legally recognized as an exercise of the right to claim damages under Article 709 of the Civil Code. How stupid is my husband to have had an affair without knowing it? My husband began to recount the details of his affair with my sister. According to him, he secretly met with my sister without you on or me. The baby in my belly is yours. I will divorce my husband, so I want you to leave that ugly woman and be with me. My sister told my husband. Then my husband became crazy about her, and he decided to run away with her. However, they couldn't find a job. In this recession, my husands and my savings helped them get by for a while, but soon their lives became untenable. And my sister's belly didn't grow. When my husband confronted her about it, she admitted that she lied about being pregnant. To my surprise, my sister had lied about being pregnant just so that she can steal my husband away from me. And when she could no longer endure the life of poverty, she abandoned my husband without hesitation. My husband was left with nothing, and that's when he called me. After recounting all the details, my husband clung to me again. I was just deceived by your sister. So, it's not my fault, right? After all, we're still a couple, aren't we? He pleaded with puppy eyes. We're not a couple anymore. We're complete strangers. Remember, when you ran away with my sister, you left a signed divorce form. I submitted it to the city hall immediately. He is the one who left the divorce paper and ran away with my sister. Yet, how can he forget that? Is he stupid? He is no longer my husband. I should call him my ex-husband. When I told him, his eyes nearly popped out of his head. What? You can't do that on your own. I won't accept it. And? I showed him my phone. There, he saw a picture of a man who he doesn't know and me, cuddling intimately. It can't be. You. He began. Cutting him off, I coldly said, That's right. I'm dating him. We're even planning to get married soon. You were the one who prepared a divorce form. Goodbye and leave already. My ex-husband stood there, dumbfounded. Oh, did you say that you were worried about your parents? Don't be, because they have cut ties with you. Don't worry, I'll take care of them even when they need a care, so you can go your own way. After the wedding, my in-laws apologized to me. My father-in-law said, my son has done something inexcusable. We're cutting ties with him. Finley, if you don't mind, would you live with us? Raising a child on your own would be difficult, wouldn't it? I don't have parents. So, I accepted their offer and moved in with them after much deliberation. I got a job to support my child and myself and my in-laws were taking care of my daughter while I worked. It was then my boyfriend fell in love with me. Of course, I had told him about my in-laws. When I told him that even though they weren't my biological parents, I now consider my in-laws as my own parents, if you say so, then they're my parents, too. 
he responded and accepted my feelings. Therefore, I will continue to have a relationship with my in-laws even if I marry him. My boyfriend even visits my in-laws home from time to time. My in-laws don't need their son anymore. You are starting to bother me now. Go home. I don't know how hard your life is, but I have no intention of forgiving you. I said and tried to close the front door, but my ex-husband grabbed the door trying to stop it from closing. Then he turned his bloodshot eyes towards me and grabbed my hand. You ran away with my sister. I said, shaking his hand off and glaring at him. Just then, my father-in-law had come home and punched my ex-husband. Are you trying to do something irreversible again? We've already cut ties with you. You're not even my son anymore. Do you even know what your mother had to do at that wedding venue? You made her do that. Don't you feel anything? My father-in-law scolded. I, I didn't know. Did, did mom. I'm sorry, mom. My ex-husband muttered. If you don't leave now, I'll call the police. My father-in-law shouted. My ex-husband, looking stunned, took a step back, and then hurriedly left. I told him while looking at his back, you'll have to pay compensation to Juan too, you know? How much will it be? I'm sure it's going to be a lot. Rumor had it that my sister became obsessed with a guy at boys bar after my ex-husband eloped with her. The bitch must have a strong love-seeking nature. And when she found a new man, she abandoned my ex-husband. My ex-husband, abandoned by my sister, thought he could count on me, but I already have a boyfriend. When I heard about his downfall, I couldn't help but think he got what he deserved. Speaking of my sister, my friend investigated her whereabouts. That made it possible for Juan and me to demand compensation from her. It seems my sister was quickly discarded by the guy from Boys Bar once he found out that she had no money. Both my sister and my ex-husband had fallen to rock bottom. In the end, we could say that karma had caught up with them for stealing someone else's happiness. My in-laws had sold their house and we moved to a different place. Now my ex-husband has nowhere to return to anymore. After everything was over, I raised a glass with my friend at a bar. It's all thanks to you. Thank you. I said. Oh, no need to mention it. We're friends, right? Then can you treat me to a dinner as a thank you next time? Sounds good. Let's do that. My ex-husband was the worst man I've ever met, but now I feel like I can somehow make it through with the support of the people around me. Besides, I'm about to marry my boyfriend. I'm determined to be happy this time around.